Osteomyelitis can be thought of simply as a bone infection. Osteomyelitis occurs when microorganisms, usually bacteria, are able to grow in bone and bone marrow. There are two ways that the microorganisms can be introduced into the bone. The first way is through an open wound. The open wound may occur with an injury such as an open fracture. There are bacteria everywhere. If bone is exposed to dirt, water, or even air, microorganisms may seed to the bone, begin to grow, and cause an infection. Bone may also be exposed to microorganisms in open sores and overlying soft tissue infections. People with diabetes often have sores on their feet that can become infected. Orthopedic implants such as plates, screws, and knee replacement prostheses make good places for bacteria to grow. The second way that osteomyelitis occurs is when microorganisms travel through the blood until they are able to settle in the bone. This is known as hematogenous infection. Often, this occurs because bacteria from another infection in the body travel through the bloodstream to the bone. Whatever the cause and whatever the source, the infection can begin to eat away at the bone. This can result in pain, loss of function, a collection of pus known as an abscess, and dead bone. Osteomyelitis is not usually visible on x-rays for several days after it begins. It will show up earlier on MRIs or bone scans. Blood work is also important. The white blood cell count is usually high. Lab values known as the erythrocyte sedimentation rate or SED rate and the CRP, C-reactive protein, are usually obtained when osteomyelitis is suspected. If they are high, it raises the doctor's suspicion of infection. These lab values are monitored as the infection is treated. If they drop, it is an indication that the treatment is working. Treatment depends on what bone is involved, where the infection is located, whether an abscess or dead bone is present, the age of the patient, and other factors. Treatment often involves surgery to remove infected bone and soft tissue. The affected area is thoroughly irrigated to wash away the bacteria and pus. The infected bone is then sent to the lab for analysis. Within a few days, the bacteria can be grown in a culture in the lab and tested with different antibiotics to see which antibiotics are most effective at killing it. While the doctors wait for these culture and sensitivity results, they can only make an educated guess as to which antibiotics will be best. This is known as empirical treatment. They make this guess based on what types of organisms have caused similar infections in similar patients. These antibiotics are usually given through an IV. IV antibiotics are often necessary for several weeks after the infection is discovered.